Hello everyone, this is George Diaz, president and founder of Larry Jacob Internet Marketing, and I'm bringing you another episode of Defining Infusion Soft Success. Isn't that exciting, everyone? We are now fast approaching episode number 70. We're not quite there yet, but we will be soon. And this week, my guest is Lynn Swayze. Lynn, how are you? Hey, I'm great. Lynn, you'll find out that Lynn's got plenty of spunk. Uh, Lynn is a <laughs> copywriter, and, and it's I, I use the term copywriter very loosely because she's really a marketer that has really good copywriting savvy. And we're going to talk about how to attract the right audience. Now, we're in the membership space, so my bias is how do we attract people to a membership site. But this will apply for just about any anybody doing any sort of marketing online, right, Lynn? Absolutely. So why don't I won't do justice introducing you. You have a great uh, repertoire of uh, clients and things. Tell people a little bit about yourself so they understand where you're coming from. Oh, thank you. Um, so my name is Lynn Swayze, definitely related to Patrick. Are you? <laughs> um, I, I am, actually. Yeah, all Swayze's are related. So there's a whole story I won't go into yet. We're oh, all related. We'll talk so. about that afterwards. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so I'm a direct response uh, copywriter and marketer, which means if you ask me something about branding, I won't know a thing. But if you want uh, marketing that gets results and that can be tested, that's my thing. Um, I'm the CEO of Copy Chief with Kevin Rogers. I'm also a staff copywriter with Mike Weiss over at Client Engagement Academy. I've worked with a bunch of other information marketers um, in the past two, two and a half years I've been in this space. Um, so yeah, exciting, exciting stuff. She, she's been working with a lot of uh, big players and she knows the space really well. So I want to start off by asking you, you know, she, she was actually one of my guests that actually sent me this profile of things. She makes my job really easy. But she uses the term the marketing trifecta. So mm -hmm. I really like that. It just sounds really cool. Tell us a little about that because I think that'll be a good way to start our conversation. Absolutely. Um, so the marketing trifecta is I, a term I came up with and I own the domain, so you can't go out and buy it, <laughs> um, yeah. just to make marketing easy, right? There are only three, and I love threes, there are only three components that you really need to worry about when you're thinking about getting more clients, getting more members, you know, whatever, you know, your buyers. Um, and it is attraction, indoctrination, and conversion. You know, it's easy to get caught in the weeds of, I need to do everything. I need to, you know, have a thousand blog posts and I need to SEO this and I need to, oh my gosh, I need to be on this social media site. And it's easy to get very overwhelmed. And when you think of the marketing trifecta, it makes it simple, right? One thing that you use to attract, one thing you use to indoctrinate, one thing you use to convert, and then you can add stuff. Sure, sure. So. So, okay, so let's start with the first one, attraction. Uh, so because, you know, again, we build membership sites and if a membership site is sitting there in the middle of the desert like an oasis and nobody can find it, well, boy, it's, <laughs> it's an exercise in futility. So mm -hmm. attraction, I guess, is, is key, especially when you're starting. Mm -hmm. So you think about a magnet. A magnet is only going to attract certain things, right? It's not going to attract plastic. It's not going to attract paper. It's not going to attract wood. It's going to attract metals, and not only metals, but specific metals. Yeah, like you sta want to stainless do that. steel refrigerators do not work with magnets. <laughs> right, <clears throat> exactly. Um, so you need to think about what you're going to do, what might work to attract your ideal buyer. Because it's not everybody. You can't serve everybody. And um, you were telling me before, the, the people that you help, they already have specific people, a specific segment of the population that they serve. You want to target just them. Um, so attraction pieces are things like Facebook ads, their space ads, their Google ads. Um, let's see, what like, else? They might be like, guest posts. Like blog articles. Blog articles, yes. And especially blog articles on other sites. So guest posts, simply because you're going beyond yourself. Gotcha. Um, and you know, kind of fishing in, in, in someone else's. Yeah, pond audience yeah exactly so it's those pieces okay so so we're trying to attract these people and i guess what it, it's key to that that you know your i mean we'll use a key term customer avatar you know exactly who those people mm -hmm. are so you would know what kind of bait is ideal for that kind of fish right absolutely absolutely um i mean you're not going to go on instagram to attract lawyers you know right right, um, right. yeah and you have to speak to their problem right you have to speak to in your ad speak to your avatar's pain point mm -hmm. to their ideal outcome, um, you know, to their problems. 
um, as opposed to, hey, I have a course and it's four ninety nine. No one cares. <laughs> you no. know, I've been in the business for thirty. No one cares. Um, you know, but I help. You know, if you say I help lawyers get, you know, however much more per month, then you know, you you speak about that. Yeah. Well, now I, tell, they care. I, I tell you what. You know, I I'm a real fan of Dollar Shave Club. Mm-hmm. And I think they have, as a matter of fact, and there's the Dollar Beard Club. I'm not part of one of those. But they are so good at basically dissecting the guy, because they don't sell shavers to women, and the guy who doesn't want to spend a lot of money, it's $1 shave club, even though you spend a little bit more than a dollar. And yeah. then their whole game is about guy stuff. So mm-hmm. they really, you know, a, a woman, it, it's, it's very unlikely, I bet, that a wife or a girlfriend would buy her guy a dollar shave club unless he asked for it. Because it's kind of like almost a turnoff to some women because it, I mean, it's not chauvinistic or anything, but it's just kind of like, it's not writing to that audience. And if right. you understand that avatar, you know, that's where this attraction, and I guess that's kind of where, where, where you're, what you're talking about in this first part of the trifecta. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you think about too, the whole A pile, B pile theory that um, was made famous so by Gary using, Halbert. You're using two letters, A and B. Is that what you said? Yes. A pile, B pile. And so this came about um, because you think about when people, you know, back when there was a lot more direct mail spam than there is now, yeah. you know, you get your, you get your junk mail, right. And you have it over a, uh, a trash bin and you're going keep, nope, keep, nope. And all of the ones that you know are junk go right into the trash can. Um, and when you're speaking directly to your avatar, they're going to go, yep. And everybody else is going to go, nope, and move on. So you don't have the as many tire kickers. You don't have many people who don't understand what you do. You know, uh, it just and works you, better. It's, yeah. a, it's a sifting process. So, mm-hmm. okay, so Absolutely. that's number one. Now, indoctrination, we were talking about this as we were prepping for this, and I really like the way you, you described this. <laughs> I mean, indoctrination is a term that, you know, Ryan Dice and his guys over at uh, Digital Marketer use all the time. But you really got specific about that. So sh- share that with me. Yes. And I, and I, like I told you, I chose this word for a reason. And what happens is think of it like you're kind of building a cult of you, a cult of your oh, brand. Right? And she, by the way, the word she's using is cult, C-U-L-T. Cult. In yes, case, no, I mean, cult, cult. you're speaking very clearly, but just in case it wasn't picked up by the... <laughs> Yes. So, so, so she wants cult. us to build a cult of us. Yes, because I guess before I go into more specifics of indoctrination, you want to make it so that your competition is obsolete, so that when your persona thinks of their problem and thinks of the potential solutions, they're still thinking about you. They're still describing it in terms that you created and in ways that, you know, in, in your worldview, which means they will come back to you. Um, it makes your competition obsolete. So with indoctrination, this is basically, so you have your ad, that's attraction. Indoctrination is those things you do before the sale to kind of frame the sale, you know, the whole pre-selling, right? So you're changing their mindset to match yours. So if they think that they're not capable of earning a million dollars with their membership site, you start changing that, right? Because they're not going to invest in you. They don't think it's possible, you know, that they're going to earn so much money, right? Sure, sure. No, but if they think that's possible, they'll spend whatever's necessary to get there because you've changed their mind. So yeah, you're basically going to create a tribe of people that will eventually buy from you because they believe in you. They're, you know, it's kind of like one mind. So it's like a cult. Um, yeah. It's, yeah, and, so it's, it, it, yeah. And so you're, you're kind of, you, you have to address their objections, I'm assuming. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're addressing their objections. You're eliminating negative beliefs and fostering positive beliefs that you want that, you know, are conducive to your goal, which is to get them to buy from you. So yeah, if they have objections like, you know, I don't have time for another course. Well, you don't have time not to take this course. Like, you know, yeah. And even terms like uh, a lot of people are concerned about buying into a new course because they just don't have time. They're so busy. But what's the cost of not making the time Absolutely. for something like this? So now you've Prolific. got that. Cool. Maybe, mm-hmm. I'm not going to be getting into copywriting, but I enjoy this. <laughs> so and some of this gets into a little bit of the whole persuasion manipulation that makes people feel icky. Um, 
but you serve a purpose. Well, by right? the way, get, 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 it, get into this, feeling <laughs> icky, because I'm a business person and, and you know, we've right. all had to overcome this. What, what are those things that we all have to overcome? Oh, in terms of actually selling and marketing? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I feel icky. I'm manipulating people. I'm building a oh, cult, yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. Because, it, I mean, those are the terms that we use in our field. Absolutely. Um, it, you And you have to do some reframing yourself. And framing is an NLP term. Basically, you have a mindset. An NLP, you, you know, na- and uh, natural linguistic, what is it? Neurolinguistic programming. Neuro- neuro-linguistic. Mm-hmm. So Richard Bandler. I can't remember the co-creator, um, totally Googleable. Yeah. Um, but basically you have, it's NLP is the map of how you think, right? So it's not the neurological stuff behind it. It's basically the representation of how you think. And your frame is kind of like your worldview right now. What you believe is possible, what you believe about yourself, you know, what you see, how you interpret data, basically. Sure. Um, I guess like your schema in a database, right? Right, right. Um, to go back to uh, that. No, no, right. Stuff. But it's kind of if if my if I if my NLP is thinking, I, I really can't sell this to people, or I don't feel nobody it, nobody will pay this much. Yeah, or, yeah, and, and yeah. People, You've got to convince yourself. And, and I tell you what, you know, I mean, I'm a programmer. So my background, I have a master's in computer science. I mean, I, the, the fact that I'm doing, that, that I can actually write, if you talk to my English professor <laughs> in high school, um, I mean, I've really come around. But for, for me to come up and know that I'm helping people, and I don't say that hypocritically, uh, I mean, if you build your membership site with someone who doesn't know what they're doing, good luck. Because that's a lot of money. And even worse for an entrepreneur, it's time that you don't mm-hmm. have, what's your opportunity lost? And it's getting past those, you know, I want to call them mental farts that really slow <laughs> you down. Right. So oh, yeah, people believe, you know, uh, the most common is I'm not worth this much because pricing is usually tied into self-worth because, you know, we all grew up, you know, getting right. paid and hourly. And, our, and our, our own worth. thinking about money, how our parents educate us about money, right? You know, if we grew right. up poor, if we grew back entitled, you know, whatever your background is, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I guess for that one, you have to believe in your bones that people are paying for an outcome. They're paying for outcome. People buy for outcomes. They do not buy because it's the best product. They won't, they won't buy, you know, because it has all the whatevers. They buy for an outcome. You are selling the outcome. That's what you're using in the attraction, in the attraction phase you know, is selling them the outcome, you know, if it's, whether it's financial or it's not having to worry about something or it's, you know, um, yeah, well, you know, no, nobody buys a car. Nobody buys a car because I can get to work every day in it. I mean, people right, are buying right. well, the Mercedes, do, but most, you know, have some kind of, yeah. But it's kind of <laughs> like, you know, am I buying a Buick? Am I buying a Chevy? Am I buying a Mercedes BMW or Lexus? I mean, those mean different things to different people. It has nothing to do with, I got to get to work today. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Okay, so that's number two of our trifecta. Now, mm-hmm. number three is your conversion, right? Actually, before we go on, sure, uh, sure. let me just say, in, in the indoctrination, it could be a webinar, a VSL, a series of blog posts, a series of emails, um, one of those like four video sequences. Um, doesn't have to be complicated. Right, or, or, or it can be as, as I mean, because a lot of people have a lot of content laying around, and if it's a way for them to see you and understand how you position your product, your solution, whatever you do. Oh, yeah, it does two in one, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so it's it's material that you go out there to really change people so that by the time, I mean, this this is typically before they've even talked to anybody, if there's even a conversation involved in the sales process. Yeah. Gotcha. Exactly. Okay. So at some point, I, I want to sell something, right? Because otherwise, mm-hmm. this this is not a good exercise from the beginning. <laughs> right. So, so exactly. now we've got so con- now we've got conversion. So how how's that work? That is the where you make your offer, right? And I usually advocate people have one offer per campaign, um, and that is your sales page generally, or um, your invitation to let's say apply and have a consultation call. Um, it is your pitch. You know, it is what you are offering to someone to buy. So, because a lot of people, they have blog posts and they have a whole big blog. I have a friend who has a podcast and he's got like 87,000 followers. Like, where's your offer? He has no offer. So he has all the indoctrination, got all the attraction, no offer. You know, so you can't make money without the offer. So 
yeah, yeah. that's that's a simple one you know it's interesting I, I i'm i meet with a couple guys every weekend it's kind of our mini mastermind and one of the guys has this monster list and he's actually i mean he's he's in financial services space but he's got this monster list of of parents and i mean he's, he's in that space and it's like man you've got to monetize that and and it's interesting because what he's doing he's oh, awesome so at, to do that too. <laughs> yeah he's awesome at indoctrinating right and, and uh, indoctrination okay. is i mean it's easy for teachers for for people who who educate who train but selling conversion is kind of that turning the corner yeah yeah, yeah that, that is, is the harder piece, piece for most people, people. Um, which is why there are more bloggers than there are copywriters, just because that is harder. Not only is it a mindset game like we talked about before, you know, getting around, being comfortable selling, um, but also being able to do it in a way that doesn't turn people off. You know, so framing it as this is in your best interest to buy is difficult. So, yeah. You know, it, it's interesting that, that you said, yeah, I never really thought about it that way. The difference between a blogger and a copywriter and... Um, I mean, you're using the term copywriter. I'm assuming that's the way you work because I've hired copywriters that are really more copy editors. Hmm. But you're you're saying someone who knows how to write copy for a sales page. Yes. So my job as a copywriter is I help you come up with what makes you unique and competition proof. Um, and then I'm going to compose your, your sales message. So usually a sales page. Um, sometimes I'll do VSLs or webinars that take people from step to step to persuade them to buy and then they'd be happy to buy that is a completely different skill set than yeah, yeah, information the, yeah you want them where's the buy button I can, you know <laughs> right i'm ready scroll, scroll. I, I, come on kid yeah <laughs> Yeah. No, yeah. And, and it's interesting because you, I, I, you know, I've written some of those, and again, I'm not, I, I'm not great at this, but I've had these where people, it's like I, I'm ADD, I don't have time, and they're almost like push, 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 and they're finally okay. There's the buy button. Yep. Cool. It, you know, it's an interesting art, and and again, I used to be, I don't say turned off, but I just didn't really appreciate that because I mean, I'm I'm old enough to remember when you actually got these things in the mail, and they were. <laughs> You know, there were usually three pieces of paper, eight and a half by 11 when you folded it in half and you had front, back, front, back, you know, it was like that. I mean, and it was like, okay, let me sit down and read this thing. And I never had the patience to go through them. Um, mm -hmm. So it, I had to kind of get past my own bias against that. But when you really dissect these, um, you know, they, they're really taking specific problems and addressing them sequentially. And that's oh, yeah. how you get to an end game, right? Absolutely. It is very sequential. It is, at least for me anyway, extremely structured. So, so I will start, um, as a peek into how I create stuff, is I'll start with the objections. And I actually have um, what's something called a real-time board. This was created by uh, Joe Schrieffer of Agora. It's called Copyboarding. I will actually take like little digital post-it notes and line out all of the objections I can think of. That usually takes a couple days. And then I will lay out the claims that would address those objections. So and my claims or others claims? Um, these would be, let's say if you're the, the seller, it would be your claims. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Got you. Um, you know, membership site owners earn, you know, those yeah. membership sites earn, you know, XX millions more on average or, you know, something like that. That would be right, a claim right. that would address an objection that may or may not be stated in the sales letter. And of course, I would also list benefits and proof that do the same things that address a specific objection. And then I structure it and reorganize it so that it's a coherent, persuasive, persuasive argument all the way down. Um, yeah, so it's very structured. And that's, again, a completely different than presenting information, right? Um, yeah, right. Well, again, it's a persuasive letter. Your, your goal is to get them to the bottom and make a call. And that's where attracting correctly and indoctrinating correctly will make people more likely to read those sales letters because they're already sold. And you're talking about, you know, your the junk mail you got when you were younger, right? If it was something you were really interested in, like a hobby you were really interested in or something, I bet you would have read the whole thing. Oh, well, like if you, it really you know, engaged you, it would have been like, yes. You well, know? you know the ones that I read, like, um, I mean, this is really going back, the, the one where you put four quarters to buy uh, record clubs. Uh -huh. And I go, you know what? I could spend a dollar, which, you know, wasn't a trivial amount of money when you're a teenager, and I can get 10 records, and then I can cancel, I think, and not have to pay for the rest of them, right? 
Uh, but oh, so, yeah. so I would be paying attention to those, but I mean, they're looking at lifetime value and most of their buyers are probably not broke high school students. But mm -hmm. um, nice. if, yeah. you're tr if you're trying to get LPs or 8-track tapes, the 8-tracks would always mess up. But You know, uh -huh. Lynn, this has been very enlightening for me. I've got to now go back to my own copywriting after I've talked to you about <laughs> this because th this, is, this is key to how, you know, a lot of us get our business. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Everyone. Everyone. Even me. Yeah, yeah this, this is, is how it works. works. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So so let me do this. Um, so if people want to reach you or get a hold of you, how would they find you? Well, I am the only Lynn Swayze that's active. Um, so LynnSwayze.com, L-Y-N-N-S-W-A-Y-Z-E. No, no, right. It's, it's right there above your name. Yep, oh, yep, exactly. Uh, LynnSwayze.com, um, and I offer free marketing consultations. So LynnSwayze.com forward slash apply. Um, you can get on my calendar. I'm usually booked the week of, um, but there's some times in the weeks following. So yeah, great. That's great. So if anybody way. want to reach reach you and talk to a very sharp copywriter and a sales copywriter, <laughs> not just a copy person, right? Yes. Uh, you're the person to call. Well, hey, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you breaking out of your busy day. <laughs> thank you. This, is, this has been fun. Okay. Well, goodbye.